There's an island of monsters and they need a king. Who are you gonna call? Deadpool! This is the Comic Storian Channel, where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel sex and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. There was a short-lived series known as Deadpool King of the Monsters that we covered here at the channel. And over the course of about a year, it came to its conclusion. So what that means is it's time for us to grab all of those old videos and put them together in a big full story right here at the channel. Deadpool, King of the Monsters. You know that thing where you can just tell something is going to be extra painful? Yeah, that's happening right now. Like, you know, being ripped in half. And five minutes later, as Deadpool looks at his lower half hanging from a tree, he sighs, telling himself, I hate being right. But as he lays there, a sophisticated bird-like monster leans down asking, Is everything all right? Deadpool tells him, well, from the feels of it, I'm only half all right. Anyway, do a friend a favor and grab the other half. Knitting back together takes a lot less time than regrowing everything. As the bird monster starts to pull down Deadpool's legs, he tells him that this is terribly inappropriate. Why would you try and kill the king of the monsters? Deadpool asks, why would any of you kill a monster king? For money! It was like a lifetime ago, really? And yesterday, in Deadpool's super secret base in New York City, he was summoned to Staten Island by a random anonymous client. But let it be known, he wouldn't step foot onto Staten Island for any less than, like, 40 bucks. Anyway, it was also his birthday, and he could tell because of the letter that he received for his yearly dental appointment. So they partied, he and mailman Carl. There were cocktails, cake, and everything, and even an ice sculpture! Okay, maybe none of that happened and he actually kidnapped Carl, but that's not the point. While sitting on the roof, he thought maybe, just maybe, the client needed his help. And that's when his conscience got the better of him. So he left for Staten Island, and while on the way, the other fairy was attacked by a giant tentacle monster. But you know what? That is not Deadpool's problem. Moving on. The client's name was Blaylock, and he wanted the King of the Monsters dead. The King had migrated all of the monsters to Staten Island because of some new legal thing, and some 17th century deal with some desperate humans. The deal didn't sound right, and eventually, the real heroes would pick up the cause. And that's when Blaylock offered payment. A boatload of gold bars. And that young monster is why he came here. The bird monster says his name is actually Bellus, and Deadpool tells him, great, as soon as my spine heals back together, we're going to shove like 40 grenades down the monster king's throat. Bellus tells him, well, as the Lord Chamberlain, I am currently serving the monster king, so... And Deadpool asks, are you going to stop me? Are you going to be a hero and save the king? Bellus tells him, no, I do not like the new king or Staten Island. The people here wish to see him leave. Deadpool yells, that's great. All I need now is, but before Deadpool could finish, a boot stomps on his head and Elsa Bloodstone asks, what the bloody hell are you doing here? Through the coughing, Deadpool tells him, working. Wait, did Blaylock hire you too? I am not sharing those gold bars. And so after being humiliated by a beautiful woman that clearly has an interest in Deadpool, he follows her up to a tower asking, what are you doing here? Elsa looks out at the giant green monster king as it uses one of its many tendrils to eat people, telling him, I'm here for the king, same as you. Deadpool tells her, well, maybe this is just going to be one of those David and Goliath type things, so you can leave now. Elsa asks, didn't you already get ripped in half once today? Whatever the case, just stay out of the damn way. Deadpool runs out shouting, that is going to be impossible because of how much you'll be in my way. And so after an uncoordinated attack that seemed like a good idea at the time, the two soon find themselves captured and about to be eaten by the Monster King hanging upside down. As they're hanging there, Deadpool says, you know, I was in a situation like this before once with Spider-Man, but this, this is so much better. You seem less uptight. And as the Monster King gets ready to eat Elsa and Deadpool yells, wait, no, eat me. I'm delicious and full of cancer. Elsa's just full of silicone. So Deadpool pulls out a sword and gets to work slicing and dicing to save the beautiful Elsa Bloodstone, except he gets one of his arms bitten off. As the two fall back to the ground, Elsa asks, what was the point of that? You lost your damned arm. And Deadpool tells her, it is all a part of my plan. I did say that I was going to kill the king with like 40 grenades. Why does no one ever believe me? You see, the arm that was bitten off was the one holding the grenades. The other one is where I kept all the pins. 
Just then, the Monster King stops moving after feeling a rumble in his tummy. And boom. As flaming monster chunks rain down, pushing Elsa onto Deadpool, he tells her, You're pressing your lady parts against me. I'm gonna assume you like me. She laughs, telling him, I wouldn't flatter yourself. I'd much rather rub against the flaming monster chunks. But you did save me. That at least earns you a human shield. And just so we're clear, there's nothing silicone about me. Once the monsters come back out to see their fallen king, Bellus announces as Lord Chamberlain of the Monsters. He officially proclaims Deadpool as the new king of the monsters. All hail the king. As the monsters pick up Deadpool and toss him into the air, he just simply shouts, Wait, what? So this is the part where Deadpool becomes king of the monsters because of some ancient monster law where if you kill a king, you become a king. Deadpool sits on his giant throne, clearly not meant for his size, with his own crown and scepter to perform his kingly duties when he realizes that being a king sucks. Being a king is supposed to be fun, not boring. Meeting people, dealing with monster problems, yelling at a giant tentacle monster to stop eating and looting people on ferries, what could be worse? And that's when Deadpool feels a small shark bite on his leg. It gets worse, in the form of Gwenpool. Gwenpool says that because of how uncertain her books have become, she needs to leave Jeff the Land Shark to live with Deadpool. Because basically it's the equivalent of your friend dropping off their dog with you. And so, since Gwenpool had to leave Jeff the Shark with Deadpool for fear of Jeff the Shark disappearing in a canceled Gwenpool book, Deadpool stands there, half regrowing an arm, a land shark the size of a small dog biting him, and he tells Jeff that this sucks. Yesterday was my birthday and no one even called me. But if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that you gotta keep moving to survive. Gotta be like, hey, a shark! Bellas asks, back to the to-do list then. And Deadpool tells him, no, being a king is a lot of nonsense. I should be swimming laps in my Scrooge McDuck style pool of gold coins. Onward to get me some ice cream. It's not birthday cake, but it's a start. And Jeff will finally stop chewing on my butt. Also a plus. Later that night, in the home of the Lord Chamberlain, Bellas turns on the lights to find that he has no power. He sighs, stating that he really hopes that it's not those pesky knife locks again. And then a voice in the shadow tells him that it's not. And a spear is thrown into Bellas. The shadowy man pulls the spear out of the lifeless body, telling him, The king can make his plans, but he can't change what this island has become. A perfect monster hunting ground for Craven the Hunter to prove his worth. So being the king is kind of weird, and we all know that, but what better way to get social acceptance from your monster populace than to advertise it? That's why Deadpool's promoting the new and improved Staten Island to be the place where monsters and humans can live in peace, mostly. Residents and visitors can enjoy their innovative green initiatives, like a monster that eats all your garbage, or better yet, fart monsters that absorb gas produced by said garbage monster. Which is why their progressive initiatives make the new island the perfect place to live, work, and play. Need to take a boat across the pond? Look no further than our new monster ferry. Cheaper, faster, and greener than the original ferries. Also, way more fun! Sure, it's slightly more dangerous, but who wants to live forever? Take a risk, everyone! As filming ramps up on the commercial for the day, Deadpool meets with his war council, consisting of Thurgo, son of Orgo, the uncontrollable, Corian, the alien, Colab, the pile, Bun Bun, the destroyer, and Nightwolf, the, uh, Nightwolf. Their job is to find Bellus. However, that proves to be difficult because unbeknownst to them, Bellus was killed by Craven. The next day, Deadpool gathers this monster crew to do some more shoots when a voice calls out asking if he really put an online vote on what to name the island. And the highest vote is Islandy McIsland Face. Deadpool quietly tells himself that he really hopes that that's not Cap, but of course it is. Could I have a moment of your time, Wade? There's something I'd like to discuss. This whole thing, you being the king of Staten Island, AKA king of monsters, it's a powder keg waiting to go off. And when it goes bad, a lot of innocent people are going to get killed. Deadpool tells him, you meant to say people and monsters, right Cap? Innocent people and monsters. Sure, it's easy for you humans to want to protect humans, but what about me? Remember what I am. Cap tells him, that is not what I meant. We don't have to be in opposite sides of this. We can work together, Wade. 
And Deadpool tells him, yeah, nah, I'm the king of these monsters. And if the other side wants a war, then we're going to give them a war, buddy. Probably some innocent civilians are going to get hurt in a war between humans and monsters. But really, it's totally your call. Cap looks at Deadpool right in the eyes. That is not how this has to be. But do try and keep the situation under control or it's going to get messy, Deadpool. Deadpool tells him, my whole life is messy. Doesn't mean it ain't worthwhile. But anyways, we should probably escort you back to the other side. We have a teleporter here. We call him Hurl. We call him that because the process is gross as hell. So you'll want to Hurl when you get home. Don't forget to write. The giant pink monster named Hurl looms over Cap and then vomits all over him, covering him in pink goo. As the goo begins to contract, before they know it, Cap disappears. Nightwolf quietly says, oh my God. And Deadpool asks, what? It's not that bad. Besides, Cap's got a better sense of humor than people think. But as Deadpool looks back, he sees a mob of dead monsters and the words, who's the king now written on the wall. Craven sits up telling him, I've been trying to get the attention of the king for a few days now. Perhaps I was being too subtle about it. Is this direct enough? Chet, the only human on the war council and the only human unfortunately named Chet in our story asks, wasn't Craven killed? Deadpool tells him, yeah, but this is the new guy, son of Craven or whatever. Apparently he thinks he's going to make a name for himself on our little island, but that's not going to happen. Craven tells him, that is a bold statement considering how you've already lost a dozen of your people. But now it is time to take the king's head. As everyone chases down Craven, a tramp is sprung, capturing most of the war console while also firing off dozens of trank darts. Deadpool pulls one out of his head, telling him, oh man, that's the good stuff. Medical grade tranquilizer right there. Nobody let that crap hit Chet. Might kill him. But how is it eight on one and we're still losing? Most of my team, along with most of a collab, is stuck in a net. Also, collab, the whole thing about you being made out of dozens of tiny man babies, you need to change that. Whenever I look at you, all I see is butts. It's getting awkward. But while the monsters in the trap struggle, the net snaps, dropping them all back to the ground. Deadpool pulls himself out of the pile, stating, ah, it's just like everything in my life. That could have gone better. But where were we? But before Deadpool could finish that, he notices a spear headed straight for Jeff the Land Shark. He quickly throws himself in front of the spear to take the hit. And Craven tells him, I've come here to kill monsters. But when I found out that you were leading monsters, well, that's a whole different kind of monster. Craven lifts Deadpool off the ground, but from across the way, Elsa Bloodstone looks down her rifle, telling him, I'm sorry that I had to come to this but I'm really out of options here. She pulls the trigger, hitting Deadpool in the head, and with a bright green flash, Deadpool disappears. As Craven escapes, Elsa checks in with everyone, asking if they're all right, while Nightwolf asks if they're supposed to believe that she cares. She just shot their king in the head. Elsa sighs, it's fine, I didn't kill anyone, I saved him. In fact, he should be here in two, one. At that moment, Deadpool is spit out of a dimension covered in a black goo, asking, what the hell was that? You know what? Who cares? Whoever did that is going to die. Elsa tells him, come on, I saved you. And Deadpool asks, from what? A knife? I'm Deadpool. I'm not afraid of a knife. Now what I am afraid of is whatever tar-filled formless hell dimension you just sent me to. Now, where the hell is Craven? But as he finishes, another trap is sprung and Bun-Bun burns through the net while another wave of trank darts come flying out. Crony and Shield to everyone while taking a majority of the darts, but Deadpool asks, uh, are you gonna be all right? Quonian gives him thumbs up and Deadpool says, you ain't much of a talker, huh? Nightwolf explains that Quonian is a mute. He understands everything they say, but he cannot speak. Deadpool gets back up telling everyone that they need to rethink their strategies, all except Elsa Bloodstone. She needs to get the hell off my island and stop coming back. All you bring are problems. But before long, another spear is thrown with Deadpool quickly grabbing one of his swords to chop it in half before it hits Nightwolf. A second one is thrown with Jeff the Land Shark jumping up and chomping down on it before it hits Deadpool. Nightwolf calls out to everyone that Craven is beginning to focus on their king. We will protect you at all costs. Deadpool tells them, you guys know I'm an assassin, right? I don't need you to protect me from anything, which is why we're going to retreat. Colab here has the ability to open portals, right? One of the man babies leans out stating, yes, but I hate it. Going through another monster's hole is so personal. A butt shaped portal slowly begins to open up and everyone begins to jump through. Before Nightwolf enters, he asks Deadpool, you'll be right behind us, right? Deadpool tells him, totally. Also, never trust anyone that says totally. He kicks Colab to shut the portal, leaving himself alone to face off against Craven the Hunter. As Colab disappears, Deadpool calls out to Craven. 
All right, now that the can of fodder is gone, it's time for us to fight man to man. Craven leaps down from the wall with a Deadpool laughing. Ha! You're so dumb! You had the advantage up until now. Also, why are you using a spear? That's just like so dumb. Craven swings the spear, cutting into Deadpool's throat so that he can't talk and tells him, that should shut you up for a bit. He then lunges with the spear, but as he misses, Deadpool kicks him in the face and jumps up into the air. Before Deadpool could strike, Craven spins back, stabbing into Deadpool, tossing him aside. The two go back and forth, punching and hitting each other, and then they manage to stab each other and they both fall to the ground. Craven gets back up, pulling the sword out with Deadpool coughing. <coughs> Ouch! Ouch so much! Okay, I can talk again! There are so many things I could have said! A true tragedy! Deadpool throws a fistful of snow into Craven's face with Craven asking, Really? That's a coward's trick! Deadpool continues to throw more snowballs, telling him, It's a savvy strategy for a guy who's fought nearly everyone on Earth and lived. He then takes out his sword, jumping into the air, telling Craven, And this is where it ends. The hunter becomes the hunted. As Deadpool slams down, he stabs into Craven over and over and over and over and over again. He jumps back up, telling him, All right, that was a bunch of stabby stabs. How does bootleg Craven like me now? Craven answers back by kicking Deadpool in the head so hard that there's a loud crutch. Deadpool stumbles back, asking, Did you just dislodge my eyeball? Okay, we're good. Let's go back to... But just then, Craven takes out one of Deadpool's swords, slicing off his arm. Deadpool responds as anyone would. Come on! Craven gets ready to attack again, but Deadpool jumps onto his head, leaping towards the top of the wall. While crawling up with his one arm, Deadpool tells him, And I have the high ground! Also, your dad, Craven Sr. or whatever, he wasn't that great. Terrible guy, really. Craven follows Deadpool up onto the ledge, but as he goes to attack, Deadpool takes his one good arm, grabbing Craven's head and slamming it into his knee. He then pushes him off, telling him, You're not the only one with traps! But as Deadpool follows, Craven charges in, grabbing him by the head, throwing Deadpool to the ground. Craven then brings the sword to Deadpool's neck, telling him, It's time we ended this little game. And Deadpool asks him, Really? Because I could still go for a little bit longer. You know, since I'm the one with the army. At that moment, Zargo charges in, slamming Craven into the wall. Craven pulls out his knife, stabbing into Zargo, asking, Must I fight it, underlings? So be it! The rest of the War Council runs in, getting their hits in where they can. Collab begins to walk up and breaks apart into a horde of man babies. They all start to chase after Craven, but as Craven gets ahead, he pushes a button and captures most of Collab. Craven then scoffs, stating, You are all the fools! And then an arrow hits him right in the chest. He looks up to see Chet. Chet tells him, You seem to have some vulnerable bits, huh? As everyone piles onto Craven, everyone can hear a hissing sound. Gas slowly begins to spread through the crowd, and Craven stands back up with a rebreather. Ah, you are all fought well. The Wolfman's pelt will have a place of honor on my wall. Or person. Deadpool jumps in, kicking Craven back, telling him, No! Nightwolf's pelt belongs to me! And Craven laughs, Ha ha! You are a coward! Too afraid to fight one on one. And Deadpool tells him, Nah, I'm just smart enough to know if you got an army, use it. Craven laughs even louder. Your army can barely stand! What are you going to do? And Deadpool asks, Who said this was the only army I built? At that moment, a kraken bursts out of the frozen pond and begins speaking in its monster language. And Deadpool tells them, Yes, you can eat him. The kraken lashes out as it grabs Craven, and Nightwolf tells him that this plan is rather clever. As Deadpool looks down with the kraken leaving with Craven, he says, I want to make a joke here or something, but all I can think about is that we have to go bury Bellis. So a few days later, Deadpool holds a service for the monsters lost in the battle, stating that he was dumb enough to think that being a monster makes you immune to death. It has made him realize that he must return to his old apartment that smells like feet. Elsa picks up the crown that Deadpool left on Bellus' grave, stating that he knows better than most what a violent world they live in. Horrible things happen, and as a leader, it is his job to carry that weight and do a better job next time. Deadpool hugs Jeff, stating, you should wear it. And Elsa tosses it, telling him, Oh, she sure as hell ain't doing that. Stop being a baby about it. No one thinks you can do this, so why not prove them wrong? It'll be a great way to get back at them all. So Deadpool catches the crown, telling her, Yeah, you know what? You're right, but I still hate you. Meanwhile, in Alaska, maybe, the kraken that ate Craven breaks out of the ice. It begins to flail about as Craven is flung from the top, ripping off one of its tentacles. The kraken then begins to escape with Craven telling it. That's right. Run. You wanted an enemy. Well, an enemy you shall have. I will not rest until I kill Deadpool, the unkillable man.
It was another wonderful day at Staten slash Monster Island, as Deadpool is taking some time to relax in the park. Sure, there wasn't any women around and he isn't swimming in gold, but sitting on a bench watching Jeff play is nice. A voice tells him that he shouldn't be letting them play, and Deadpool lets out a loud sigh. <sighs> not you again! Normally I wouldn't say this to an insanely hot woman, but can you please leave me alone? Elsa Bloodstone sits down beside Deadpool, telling him that she is a monster hunter. So as long as he is the king of the bloody monsters, then their fates will always be intertwined. And that over there in the pond? That shouldn't be happening. Deadpool asks, why shouldn't Jeff be playing with Smash Smash? They're best friends! And Elsa asks, you named it Smash Smash? Deadpool tells her, yeah. Uh, the giant kaiju kid? Smash Smash? What else would we name him? Elsa tells him, no, that monster is Rafamigajara, a hybrid of a giant monster from Japan and slightly less giant but electrically charged monster from Sweden. And it's a youngling. That means that it's particularly unstable. Deadpool yells, come on, look at them! They're adorable! Elsa tells him, right, Smash Smash is already halfway to Manhattan. So a short while later, he brings in Nightwolf and says, all right, Stupid Elsa was right. He went to Manhattan, but I'm, I'm going over there and I'm going over there alone to save this. Nightwolf tells him, surely this is what your honor guard or roundish table was intended for, my liege. Deadpool tells him, nope, no offense, but the last thing I need in Manhattan right now is more monsters. Elsa says that she'll help, but Deadpool tells her that she will absolutely not come. She was not invited, but uh, what's the fastest way to Manhattan, Elsa? So a short while later, Deadpool stating, no, 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 not Hurl! No way! Nightwolf tells him, you wanted the fastest way, letting Hurl cover you in his pink goo and teleporting you away is the fastest. Deadpool sighs, fine. Make it quick then, please. Jeffrey jumps up and sinks his teeth into Deadpool's butt as Hurl is, well, hurling all over Deadpool. A few seconds later, Deadpool and Jeff plot in the middle of Manhattan while Smash Smash is looking at a building and then Smash Smash says explosions with emojis. Deadpool yells out, wait, you just said explosions. That's real bad. Try not to get eaten, Jeffrey. As Deadpool fires a grappling hook up onto one of the nearby buildings, he calls out to Smash Smash asking, what do you think you're doing? You can't be doing this. Smash Smash roars with a fire plus electricity emoji. So Deadpool says, those are not great words to be using right now. Elsa jumps down onto the building telling him, we need to hurry. Smash Smash is beginning to charge up. Deadpool slaps his face. You're like a bad penny, a bad hot penny. Do I need to get a restraining order on you or something? Elsa tells him that this one's important. If she were to leave it to him, he would find a way to mess it up. But while the two begin to bicker, Smash Smash gets ready to release his blast and Deadpool hands Elsa Jeffrey and pushes them out of the way. Smash Smash releases his fiery electrical blast into Deadpool and as his skin is sizzling, Deadpool coughs. <coughs> We're done here. It's time to come home before this turns into something worse than extreme property damage and you know, burning me alive. And as your king, this is an order. Elsa tells him, you know you probably said the worst thing to him, right? Smash Smash doesn't respect your authority. Maybe when he's older, but right now he's currently in a transitional phase for his kind, which is destructive, anti-authoritarian, and very bad for New York City, Deadpool. The only way you're going to get out of this is by attacking Smash Mash's weakness. If you can get under the horns on the back of his head and neck, the flesh there is weak and... And Deadpool yells at her, No! Stop! We are not killing Smash Mash! I'm trying to reason with him, Elsa! And Elsa asks... And how did that work for you so far? You were just burned alive. What if that had been someone else? Me, or even Jeffrey? Everyone is already waiting for you to fail at this king thing. But if Smash Smash kills a civilian, it's going to be a whole lot worse, Deadpool. And while they're trying to figure out their plan, Jeffrey decides to take his own initiative. And he dives fins first straight at Smash Smash and into his mouth. Deadpool grabs his swords. Okay, that was a big mistake. Give me back that shark! He stabs into Smash Mash's head, and when he doesn't get a reaction, he asks, What gives? How did I not hit something important? Elsa tells him that Smash Mash's skin is three feet thick, except behind the blasted horns. So while Deadpool and Elsa hack and shoot their way into Smash Smash's head, there's a loud chomp, and Jeffrey bursts out. Deadpool begins to yell, All right, gross but awesome! He turns back, swinging at the horns, cutting them off, exposing the soft, fleshy skin underneath. Elsa gets ready to fire at them, but Deadpool tells her, Wait! I still don't want to kill him! 
Smash Smash actually hasn't hurt anyone yet. We have to try, Elsa. So Deadpool gives Smash Smash a heart-to-heart -heart talk. That the two of them are more alike than he may think. That neither of them fits in anywhere. That they can't be destructive about it. That they can't go eating small land sharks. Because if something bad happens, it's open season on all of them. All the monsters. You understand, right? Don't do this, Smash Smash. Smash Smash pauses for a moment and then yells, EXPLOSION! And it turns to vaporize two nearby citizens. Deadpool sighs, asking himself, Why does it always have to come to this? Why can't I do something other than killing? So he sinks his swords into the soft, fleshy skin, and Smash Smash screeches, falling to the ground dead. Elsa makes her way down and Deadpool tells her that he thought he had him for a moment, but she's right. Smash Smash, along with two people, are dead now. And Elsa says that she isn't so sure that she was right. She's been around monsters her whole life. It's easy to assume that they're all the same, but that's a mistake. Maybe she'd forgotten that a little bit, but it's good to be reminded. As she takes Deadpool's hand, he asks why she won't leave him alone. Because she knows he can't do this? And Elsa tells him, actually, it's the opposite. Maybe he's really good at this, and with a little help, he might be able to make a difference. Maybe he's the kind of monster to make things better for everyone. Deadpool says, yeah. You know, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me. You do know my face looks like hamburger, right? She says that she's been looking at monsters her whole life. And looking at his face would be like looking at boring wallpaper. Deadpool then says, all right, I was wrong. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. So as the meeting of the roundish table comes to a close, Deadpool decides to pass the time by playing a game of war with monster cards of Monster Island's finest, monsters. Jeffrey plays Hurl, and Deadpool says that that's a tough one to beat, but Hurl's got some limitations. He can teleport people by barking at them, but he doesn't have arms. Now Nightwolf, he's a game winner, because you're a shark and you're terrible at card games, Jeff. Jeffrey plays Jelby, and Deadpool grabs it asking, who's this? I haven't seen this one before, and Shelby is a terrible name. Wait, oh my god. Look at what this guy can do. So a short time later, after calling together the roundish table, Deadpool says that he's had enough. The snooty X-Men and their fancy Krakow and Gates, which is totally nuts because even though I'm not a mutant, most people believe that I am a mutant. Because of that, I should be able to enter those stupid gates. Meanwhile, the mutants are sitting around while they have a cure for cancer. It's like, hello, I have cancer. How many times do I need to help those guys before they give a crap about me? Rogue is cool, but everyone else sucks. Everyone sits in silence for a few moments and Elsa Bloodstone asks, so you're saying that the X-Men are a bunch of jerks? And Deadpool shouts, yes! Elsa tells him, we already knew that. Isn't that supposed to be a part of their charm? And Deadpool yells again, yes! But what I'm trying to say is that those jerks have it set so that only mutants can enter their flowery gate things. And thanks to Jelby here, I can now answer Cancer Free Island. Jelby is a mutant and he can carry infinite things inside of him. He stretches to fit around them with his purple blobby body. Isn't that right, Jelby? So Deadpool begins to climb into Jelby's mouth with Jelby mumbling. Oh, oh, oh. Deadpool goes on telling him, once I'm inside of Jelby, I can just go through that snooty X-Men Island gate thing. Once Jeffrey latches onto Deadpool's butt, Deadpool yells, it's foolproof. Nightwolf says that if this doesn't cause an international incident, I will be shocked. So a short while later in Manhattan, Deadpool walks into the Krakoan Gate in Washington and shouts that he is coming home. Hope you've got the pool ready. As the world changes to the lush forests of Krakoa, Deadpool dances around. It's even more beautiful than I've ever imagined. He crawls out of Jelby, stating that the smell in here isn't great, by the way. Not bad, but not great. And next time, we're definitely going to have to be a little more flexible on whether or not Jeffrey tags along. But while he begins to set foot on the grass, Wolverine and the other X-Men begin to ask, What the hell are you doing here, Deadpool? Deadpool gets up dusting himself off, stating, I just assumed my invitation was lost in the mail, bub. But you know what? You guys are a bunch of secret handshake jerks. Some of us out there are having cancer and you're living it up in here like kings. Oh, people like us can come and live here. You know what that sounds like? Fascism. That's right. The X-Men are a bunch of fascists. Magic elbows Deadpool in the nose and breaks it. And Deadpool shouts, really? You guys are the worst. She then kneels down asking, what do we do now? Also, the shark is adorable. Can I keep it? So a short while later in the council room, Deadpool walks in yelling, Emma, darling, you look magnificent. Emma tells him to shut up and stop kissing her butt. Also, what is that thing beside you? It looks like a fabulous handbag with legs and teeth. I must have it. 
Deadpool asks, how dare you? That's not a thing or a handbag. It's Jeffrey. And Emma tells him, very well, back to business. Rogue has made an impassioned plea on your behalf, Deadpool, noting that you should have been invited to visit given both your new status as the King of Staten Island and also as someone who has frequently been a friend and ally to the mutants. Deadpool asks, Will I get a summer home like the one I've heard about that's on the moon? Or an unlimited crack Cohen pass to come and go as I please? Or one of those flower gates to put up in Staten Island? Great! Pleasure doing business with you guys. But Emma stops him. No. First, I'll say this with the most genuine regret. We do not have a cure for cancer. As for the rest of your requests, those are also a no. We will look over this break-in at this time, but right now, if you wish to visit, you must go through the proper channels. Deadpool asks, why though? And Emma says, to be honest, you're dangerous and unstable. We're trying to build a nation here, and you're an X Factor, excuse the pun, that we can ill afford. We literally ran numbers on you, and the over-under of you burning this place down in less than a month is something like 97%. As for the gates, there are two gates in Manhattan. Just a ferry ride away, don't get greedy. Deadpool turns and walks off. Jerks! Fascists! Absolute jerks and fascists! So five minutes later in the flower fields, Deadpool says that he's taken this flower with him and no one can stop him! But Wolverine stabs him in the back, telling him, Don't do this. Deadpool pulls out his swords, yelling, You started it by being absolute dillweeds! The X-Men all take turns punching into Deadpool, and after being electrocuted by Storm, Deadpool picks up Jeffrey, stating, This was called a fastball special! The X-Men love it! He turns back, chucking Jeffrey at Storm, and Polaris asks if he could just not get off already. He needs to stop before someone gets hurt. And Deadpool asks, Why should I? Not enough metal around? Feeling kind of vulnerable, Polaris? She laughs, telling him that she always brings her own. Besides, he brought plenty. One of his swords is suddenly ripped out of his hands and stabs him in the back and into the ground. He screams out, Ah! Ouch! Oh god, everything's wet! Something sharp definitely pierced my back, or I just peed. Both are embarrassing, to be honest. Jeffrey leaps over, chomping down on Polaris' leg. But before Polaris can do anything, Deadpool yells, RUN! Wolverine then stabs Deadpool, telling him, Don't make me go hard. Stand down. And Deadpool yells in pain, asking, That's you going easy? Forgot what a joyride you are to be around. Magic swings her sword, asking, Why are you even here? And Deadpool yells, Because I don't like being excluded! He then punches Magic in the nose, telling her, And that's for breaking my nose! But before he could go on, a hand reaches out, asking him to stop. Deadpool looks back, and Rogue says, Hi, you gotta stop this. I'm sorry that we can't fix you, that we can't heal you, Deadpool. But this acting out isn't going to work. You're only making things worse, and that's not good for anyone. Take this flower. I will soothe things over with Emma. Plant this on Staten Island. Help your people, and don't be a stranger. Deadpool takes the flower, throwing it on the ground, telling her, It's a nice gesture. But I don't need your pity. I don't need it from any of you. Rogue tells him that it's not pity. And Wolverine tells him, it's just friendship. Deadpool turns, calling out to Jelby, telling him, it's time for us to go, Jelby. But Jelby stops him. I would like to stay if that's okay. Deadpool asks, really? You're doing this now? I can't even get back home without you. And Magic then says that she will return him home. And Deadpool tells it, sure. After that tussle at breaking her nose, I'll be surprised if I don't get stranded in limbo hell. Magic tells him that she would never do that to the shark. As Deadpool is teleported away, he stands up and screams, YOU'RE ALL fascists!" The next day, Deadpool gets to work on making a sign that says he doesn't need their pity. That they don't need anyone's pity because he is a king! Still, he can't believe that Jelby stayed back with them. He's surrounded by traitors. Jeffrey walks up and after hacking up, he spits out the Krakoan flower that Rogue gave Deadpool. Deadpool pets Jeffrey, telling him, Nice! Krakoan flower covered in shark barf. Anyway, who cares what the mutants do now that the first rule of New Staten Island is no more mutants. If I can't go to their island, they can't come here. Elsa then walks up stating that it's a nice sign. Get some elementary school kids to make it. And Deadpool tells her, look, sometimes you're mean, sometimes you're nice. All the time you're hot, which makes it both 10 times worse. I've had a rough day and I'm too emotionally tapped to really bother with anything. Can we just table the confusing sexual tension for later? She takes off her glove telling him that she's afraid that it's more urgent than that. No more jokes. As she holds out her hand, Deadpool sees a hole in the middle of her palm and dark energy shooting through her veins. And Elsa tells him, I'm dying. Our story begins as Deadpool has a wonderful dream and he's finally getting to kiss Elsa Bloodstone and her. 
confessing her love to him until he's eaten by a giant lava dragon. But as the Merc violently awakens on his throne on the island formerly known as Staten, he yells that he's already said no more dream monsters as footstools. They give him crazy vivid dreams. As Deadpool gets up, he runs into Elsa and she asks if he's sure that they have no other teleporting monsters that don't require them being barfed on in order to teleport. Deadpool tells her that he's not 100% sure, but he's 82% sure. And they can also go through Colab's portal, but that's kind of like crawling into someone's butt. So after opting to not go the butt route, they find themselves in Greenland a few moments later. And Deadpool asks Elsa, why are we here again? What are we walking into? She holds out her hand to explain the situation, showing that her bloodstone, which gives her all of her powers, is infected, stating that they are going into the seam, the tear between their dimensions and the dimension of the bone beast. The plan is to go in, kill the beast queen that infected her and go home, saving her life. Deadpool pauses for a moment and says that she'll have to forgive him if he needs a bit more details than that. Like, what in the hell is a damn bone beast? Elsa sighs and says that she doesn't know how to bloody explain it. They're bone beasts. They're all black and sort of fluid and swirly. Big sharp teeth, hard to kill. Messy. They have a hive mind, sort of. So the queen controls them. Kill her and the rest of them will just die off. Deadpool begins to yell, Dames are the literal worst! I am such a chump for a pretty face. But can we just skip the cagey mysterious thing this time? So after another long, drawn-out sigh, Elsa begins with her flashback of how she encountered the Bone Beast. She can't remember, was she in Greece or Prague? Definitely Prague. Anyway, she was trying to save the world when she was suddenly being dragged into the seam, the Bone Beast world. She fired a blast from her bloodstone into the seam before being fully sucked up, and just like that, she was free. Deadpool pokes his head into the flashback, asking if she can wrap this up. The book is called Deadpool, not Elsa Bloodstone. Shut it down, Elsa! Back in the present, Elsa says that it was a bit too late at that point. She had already become infected, and it had already begun. Deadpool points to the sky, stating, See, the sun went down while you were yammering. We should probably get this over with. Elsa then climbs up onto the ledge, stating that, Okay, there it is. And Deadpool looks down at the oozing, floating hole and states, okay, that is so gross. It's like the seam is pooping onto our world. I hate and love it. I'm very conflicted about this one, Bloodstone. But they're in the village down there. We should probably go save them. Elsa begins to tell him that they should just focus on the queen, but seeing Deadpool already pulling out a sword, she gives up following suit. They begin to plow down towards the town, along with Jeff, jump into battle, and Deadpool asks, what is the deal with these things anyway? What is their motivation? She asks him, doesn't the name give it away? They like to eat bones. So Deadpool hacks away through the group, stating, sure, I get that, but like, what's their reasoning? Are they actually evil? Or are they trying to feed little baby bone beasts? Elsa chops down another beast, telling him, no, I don't think that there are any baby bone beasts or any great bone beast literature or museums or science. Think of them like worker bees, Deadpool. At that moment, Deadpool sees one of the creatures eating a dog and stops himself right there. Wait. These things are killing dogs? Okay, that is inexcusable. No more bones for you, sir. As Deadpool gets to work, Elsa begins to feel the infection throbbing in her and falls to her knees. Deadpool quickly slices through the oncoming bone beast, asking if she's okay. Elsa struggles telling him yes, but they have to hurry. Deadpool pulls out his guns, telling her, Okay, come on, bone beast! Lots of bones, no waiting! And after completely obliterating the remaining creatures, Deadpool blows smoke from his gun, telling her, I needed that. Not enough shooting lately in these comics. One of the villagers run up to thank Deadpool, but tells him that they also took their children. Please save the children. The two begin to climb back up the mountain, and Elsa says that if things go pear-shaped, it's okay to just leave her. Take Jeff and get out. Remember, when this closes, we'll be trapped in here for, like, well, longer than we want to be. So let's just be our best, fastest, and most deadly selves, okay? Deadpool tells her, oh, you stop flirting. This is work time. Once they crawl inside of the portal, Deadpool refrains from making several jokes about climbing into a butt. And the heroes walk through a cavernous mall with dozens of bone beasts trying to bite them. Deadpool holds up his torch, telling her, I can't tell what's a bone beast and what's just lawn. Wait, do they have lawns? Who knows? It all looks the damn same. While avoiding getting his foot bitten off, Deadpool runs face first into a wall, and a voice then says, Elsa Bloodstone, you have returned, and as promised, you have brought me he who shall replace you as my new host body. 
As the Beast Queen roars, Deadpool stops for a moment and looks at Elsa, yelling, Are you freaking kidding me, Bloodstone? So a short while later, Deadpool wakes up to hear voices telling him, Mr. Deadpool, Mr. Deadpool, you need to wake up. Deadpool opens up his eyes to see several children, and he begins to yell at them, I'm awake already! You made real sure of that. Also, why is everyone's hair going up? He looks around and realizes that they are actually all suspended upside down and simply says, Ah, oh, crap, we got captured by the Bone Beast. So I got a better question. Why was I sold out, Bloodstone? Elsa goes on. Right, that. I may have told a bit of a lie before I said that I escaped the Bone Beast realm. I didn't escape as much as I was, well, let go so that I could bring back someone to be the Queen's new host. Jeff begins to wiggle and growl, but Deadpool tells him, Relax, Jeff. Everyone prepare yourselves for a real threat. Just then, a small knife pokes out of Deadpool's bindings, and Elsa says, Is that it? I thought it'd be bigger. Deadpool starts to saw away, telling her, Hey, beggars can't be choosers, Bloodstone. I don't see you freeing us with a tiny knife. As Deadpool frees himself, he epically lands superhero fashion. And Elsa tells him, Okay, that was very impressive. Now free us, you fool! Deadpool looks around and sees all of his equipment nearby, and he goes, Wait, they left all my guns here. I have an idea. After a majestic jump and twirl, he frees everyone from their cocoons, and Elsa flicks off the last bit on her shoulder, stating, Those are some nice cuts. Real clean, Deadpool. Deadpool yells, I am not trying to impress you! I am still mad at you, Bloodstone! Elsa then asks what they're going to do now, and Deadpool tells her that he has an idea. So a few moments go by, and we now have a bunch of children all swinging swords and guns. Elsa reminds him that they just gave children deadly weapons. Deadpool shrugs and says, I didn't say I had a good idea, but if any of you shoot or stab me, Elsa, or Jeff, there's going to be hell to pay. And because we're kind of already in hell, things are probably going to remain the same. Elsa inches around the corner, stating that she can see the exit, and Deadpool looks over her, stating that they should escape through there. I'll go distract the beast while you take the kids and Jeff, and you get the hell out of here. She tells him that she likes the plan, but she'll be the distraction. The truth is, she's not strong enough to protect them. Deadpool tries to think of something witty to say, but when he comes up with nothing, Elsa asks him, is that all it took to finally shut you up? Elsa picks up her gun and runs in, stating, go, I'll do what I can. While she creates a diversion, Deadpool takes all of the children to the alcove by the portal. But one of the kids points, asking what should they do now. Deadpool looks over and sees Elsa knocked out and begins carving his way to save her. Once the group is cleared, Deadpool picks up Elsa and sees the infection spreading on her, telling her to hold on. She weakly says that she never meant to betray him, that she just thought he was so strong, unkillable. She thought he'd help her, but she ran out of time. She passes out and Deadpool just says, no, 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 this isn't happening. I am real mad at you. You can't die here when I've got so much yelling left to do. But then it hits him. The source of her infection is coming from the bloodstone. Why not remove it? He takes out his knife and he pries the bloodstone out of her hand, telling her that it might hurt, but she'll be fine afterwards. As he bandages his upper hand, he asks why they didn't do this ages ago. Sure, she'd have a disfigured hand and the loss of all her superpowers, but you know, be alive. The Beast Queen leans out stating that she didn't because she needed that, because without it, she'd have been eaten. Deadpool asks if she could just back the hell off. And the Queen yells, I will not! That stone is mine, and so is Elsa! So Deadpool picks up the magical bloodstone asking, Oh wait, this is what you want? We'll come and get it. And he slams the jewel into his chest. As it begins to take root, Deadpool says heroically, Ow, 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 ow! But once he's supercharged with bloodstone's powers, he says, that's it. That's the good stuff. The infection sucks, sure, but these superpowers are serious business. Hope you brought an army. The queen towers over the rest of her brood coming out asking, you want an army? No problem. Deadpool slices, then double slices, then triple slices, and then slightly ineffectually kicks, and then he slices again. One of the creatures lunges in, but Deadpool punches through the boned beast's mouth and starts unloading as many bullets as he can. But as he shakes the remains of the beast, the queen says that he forgot something. The infection means that she's already in his head. Deadpool begins to scream at her, Hey, I am not that easy. I require dinner and a movie first. The queen tells him that he is wasting his time. He won't be able to stop their merging together. She'll first start with, Wait, do you call your island Deadpoolopolis? And Deadpool yells back at her, Maybe? And the queen says that when she's done with it, it'll be called the Bone Zone. Get it? Deadpool responds in turn. That is a stupid name, and jerky teenagers are going to think you're talking about 
But you know what they think you're going to talk about. One of the larger bone beasts jumps in, chomping down on Deadpool. But as he rips him off, he pulls off his glove to see the progression of the infection. And when he sees that his arm has turned nearly black, he says to himself, Oh, that ain't good. He looks over to see Elsa Bloodstone getting the last of the children out, and then he comes up with a great idea. If the queen wants to merge with them, let's just skip the ceremony and merge. Screw it! But I sure hope you like indigestion! Seeing as their time is running short, Elsa grabs the remaining kids and chucks them through the portal, leaving only Jeff remaining. As she picks him up, he squirms, and Elsa tells him to stop. He can keep his mouth knife. Now hurry up and get through! As everyone safely gets out, Elsa jumps through the portal, and Jeff begins to whimper. Elsa tells him that she knows, but Wade is very strong, real hard to kill. Maybe he'll make it? Back inside of the scene, the queen says that that is not how things are done. Your efforts are in vain. I can still transfer myself into your body. It'll just be messier and more painful this way. Deadpool tells her that she's a pretty smart pile of black goo, but she forgot one thing. She forgot that he has a whole mess of pockets, and they're filled with more than just cool trading cards. But more importantly, you'll need an actual body to merge with later. Deadpool strikes the dynamite and his body explodes into a million bloody pieces. A few moments pass and Elsa peeks through the portal asking if he's alive. The blown apart queen screeches as she begins to die and Elsa sees Deadpool's head. The bloodstone states that the host of the stone is dead and the queen's infection has burned out of the bloodstone. Which means back in you go. And as the jewel is set back into Elsa's palm, the queen makes one last attempt to attack. But Elsa turns back, firing a blast to finish things off. And with the queen finally dead, she picks up Deadpool's head, telling him that she's so, so sorry. She isn't one for cheese-filled speeches, but she hopes that he knows that his sacrifice saved her life, Jeff's life, and all those kids. It means something. It's real. One of the most real things that she's ever seen is she will never forget his sacrifice. Maybe he can come back? She kisses his head, and she waits for a moment. And then she says that she supposes it was too much to hope that he'd come back to life from that. Just then his head springs back to life and he says, you know, that was nice and all, but if I'm being honest, I'm still looking for that apology. They begin to argue over what's considered an apology and then they notice the portal to leave is closing. She laughs as she takes off her jacket, stating that they have to hurry. There should be an open seam in Egypt that they could escape from. And as she creates a holder, Deadpool asks if they're dating now. Elsa nestles his head inside, telling him maybe. She's actually dated more bizarre things than just a sentient head with a miraculously functioning vocal cord. Now, let's go home, Deadpool. And there you guys have it. One of my favorite, but one of the shortest Deadpool storylines that ever existed. They started this one, and then they started a whole new direction for the X-Men, and technically Deadpool's an X-Men, so I guess he fell under that whole, like, big change to the company idea. Either way, what do you guys think of this? Do you wish that it had continued? Are you glad that it's over and they can do something else with them? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you don't have an opinion either way, but you want to help support the channel, please consider just giving us a smiley face. That's really all we're going to need. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time right here.